What happens if your one driven wheel has lost traction, but the other driven wheel is fine and on hard ground, but somehow doesn't seem to roll ahead? Look at this scenario. This left rear wheel is fine and on hard ground. The front wheels are also fine and have traction, but we have not yet called them into action because we are still on two wheel drive too high. So ignore the front for now. The rear right wheel is spinning away to glory, wasting all that engine torque. This is because of the differential. Perhaps the most misunderstood component anywhere on the internet. To explain this and to explain how differentials work, let's go back to basics. This wheel on the road doesn't roll off on its own because friction is holding it back. Let's say that a twisting work done by 10 Newton meters of torque is just enough to make it overcome this friction against the road. So let's connect an engine to do this twisting work for us and supply 10 Nm of torque and the wheel overcomes this friction and just starts to roll. But the engine has much more capacity to do this twisting work, say up to 100 Nm. If the engine supplies all this torque to this wheel, then simplistically speaking, the first 10 Nm of torque will be used to overcome friction. The extra torque being supplied will help it to gain forward speed, spin faster and roll ahead. Now what if the same wheel is on an icy road? Obviously, there is going to be lesser friction holding it back. Let's say just 5 Nm of torque is enough to overcome friction now. Now again, if the engine supplies just 5 Nm, it is enough to start spinning the wheel and if your engine supplies 10 Nm, simplistically speaking, 5 Nm will be used to overcome friction and the extra torque rolls the wheel ahead with a proportional follows forward speed. But since the road is icy and the wheel won't be able to bite or grip the surface ahead of it, it won't be able to comfortably roll ahead, right? It will slip and skid and some drama will be there, but it will roll ahead awkwardly. Because it is shamefully unable to utilize all that extra supplied torque, it is unable to put it down on the icy road because of lesser grip. Let's take this to the extreme and hold the wheel up in the air. Now there is no friction with the air. The only thing preventing the wheel from rolling off is the mechanical friction of the axle and the hub, which is very low. Let us say only 2 Nm. Now our engine has to give just 2 Nm of torque to make the wheel spin freely. If the engine supplies anything extra, only 2 Nm of it will be used to spin. And now in this case, since there is nothing absolutely to bite or grip onto, there is no reaction and hence the wheel simply cannot absorb anything more than 2 Nm of torque. It will simply spin in the air drinking only 2 Nm torque regardless of what the engine is capable of supplying. In a car, there are two such wheels on an axle connected by a differential in the middle. The differential has two functions. Let's say two rules it obeys. Number one, it will allow the wheels to spin at different speeds. Why is this required? Well, if you are taking a turn, the inner wheel has to cover lesser distance and hence slow down compared to the outer wheel which will go faster to cover the longer distance it has to do. So this differential allows each wheel to have differential speeds. But because of the way the mechanical gearing inside the differential unit is set up, while doing this, it also splits the torque equally between the two wheels. This is called an open differential and will be our rule number two. Now let's put both wheels on the road. We know that each requires 10 Nm of torque to start rolling, overcoming friction. No problem, the engine has the capacity to supply 100 Nm, but the differential will, simplistically speaking, demand first 20 Nm of torque, split it equally as 10 Nm to each of the wheels to help them each overcome friction and now that the wheels are biting and gripping and rolling ahead on the road and getting some reaction from the road, the differential will supply more torque. The differential will in turn demand all the 100 Nm from the engine and split it equally to both wheels, helping them to not only overcome friction, but spin faster and proportionally gain forward speed using the extra 40 Nm each. Now, let's put one wheel on ice. 
This wheel needs only 5 Nm to overcome friction, but the left wheel on the road needs 10 Nm to start rolling. This is where the lazy differential pumpkin shows off its third rule. The third rule is that an open differential supplies only that much torque required by the wheel offering least resistance. In this case, the right wheel which requires only 5 Nm because it's on ice. And because of the second rule that equal torque will be split to the left and right wheel, the left wheel also gets only this 5 Nm which is supplied to it. Now the left wheel needs 10 Nm to make it roll. So this 5 Nm is inadequate for the left wheel to make any movement. Now let lift this wheel in air. Now it requires even lesser to start spinning, only 2 Nm. Again, the differential rule number 3. It will supply only 2 Nm to the wheel in the air, which is offering the least resistance in this case. And this is enough to cause it to start spinning freely in the air. Since no more capacity to absorb the torque is there, the differential doesn't supply anything more. But sadly, due to rule number 2, which is the equal torque rule, the left wheel on the road again gets only 2 Newton meters, and which is not enough for it to make the left wheel on the road move at, ahead, and hence the vehicle won't move ahead and the vehicle is stuck. To get out of this situation, vehicles like the Suzuki Jimny use something called the brake LSD or brake locking limited slip differential. What happens is that when this wheel is spinning in the air, the vehicle reactively senses that the wheel on the right is in the air and is spinning freely and applies brake to the right wheel. Once that wheel is braked, it has infinite resistance. It will demand infinite Nm of torque to overcome the friction against the immovable brake pads. Right? Let's now flip the third rule of the differential and use it against it. Now, relatively speaking, the left wheel on the road is on a path of least resistance and demands only 10 Nm of torque, which the lazy pumpkin open differential will supply and this will help the left wheel to roll ahead. The second rule is still valid, the torque will split equally to the other wheel also. So 10 Nm of torque will go to the wheel in the air also, but the brake will simply grind away all that supplied torque as heat, not letting the wheel rotate at all. So the left wheel on the road overcomes friction, moves ahead and the vehicle is not stuck anymore. Eventually, the vehicle will automatically release the braked right wheel and since both wheels have equal resistance after that, they can absorb more torque and the differential will supply the full 100 as 50-50 equal to both wheels, helping them move ahead with speed. Notice that in the open differential, the torque distribution is always equal between the left and the right wheel. The differential was open always throughout this adventure and we merely fooled the lazy differential to choose the wheel that can gain traction. In complete contrast, in vehicles like the Scorpio N or Gurkha, we do not leave the differential open. We intervene and lock the differential axle either mechanically in the Gurkha by pulling levers by the driver or automatically electronically in the Scorpio N. Once we lock the differential in these vehicles, the wheels are no longer allowed to spin at different speeds. The axle becomes one unit like train wheels. Now in an open differential, the torque on the left wheel and the torque on the right wheel were equal. In the lock differential, the speed on the left wheel and the speed on the right wheel are equal. Lock differential will see that the wheel on the air is at 0 rpm. It diverts 10 Nm of torque to the left wheel to help it overcome the friction and supply nothing to the right wheel. When it gives a little bit more than 10 Nm, say 11 Nm of torque to the left wheel, it starts to rotate slowly at say 1 rpm. Using the extra torque, it moves ahead and the vehicle comes out. The differential will supply whatever torque that the right wheel also requires to maintain the same speed, that is say 1 Nm for 1 rpm. It will continue redistributing this torque as required, always maintaining same rotational speed of left and right wheel. Finally, it will take all the 100 Nm and split it 50-50 equally if both wheels are in a position to absorb it and both will get good forward speed and move at say 10 RPM on both wheels. This obviously, this ob locking differential must be opened once you are out of trouble because the lock differential will not let you turn the wheels 
since they are not allowed to move at different speeds. So each method has its own pros and cons. The Jimny gets away with this shortcut of brake LSD because it is so light in weight and so it won't stress the brake pads much. Heavier vehicles like the Gurkha and Scorpio will be better off by mechanically locking their differentials to do heavy off-roading.